what's up everyone, TJ here. We're out at Mammoth Mountain doing a free ride test with Snowboard Mag. And in this video, we're taking a look at the Solomon High Path. I'm gonna go through all the tech you're gonna find in this board. I'll share some feedback on how it's feeling out here. And if you wanna read even more about it, you can click the link down in the description below to check out the feature on snowboardmag.com. Let's check it out. All right guys, for reference, before we jump into the tech, I'm five foot 10, I weigh around 155 pounds, and I rode this snowboard in a 156. So the high path is gonna be an all mountain and free ride focused snowboard on the Solomon lineup. It does have a directional design, so you're gonna find a directional outline in this snowboard with a slightly longer nose than tail outside the contact points, giving this board more surface area up front, as well as a slight taper and setback. So on the 156, you're gonna find three millimeters of taper. So the tail is just ever so slightly narrower than the nose of the snowboard. It's gonna reduce the surface area in the back as well as a 20 millimeter setback. So the insert pack where you mount your bindings is shifted a little bit closer to the tail of the snowboard, naturally keeping your weight further back. All those things are gonna to work together to enhance the overall experience in soft snow and in powder. This is gonna be a camber dominant snowboard. It runs Solomon's rock out camber. So the way that profile looks is camber zones under your feet with a flat section between your feet, giving it that overall camber shape through the body of the snowboard with rocker in the nose and tail. So gonna come through with that more energetic, precise locked in feel you'd expect out of camber, but the rocker in the tips is gonna give you more leverage for presses and butters. It's gonna be a little bit more catch free when you're flat base, and it's gonna make turn initiation a little bit easier and smoother as well. You're also gonna get a sintered base in this snowboard, which is a higher end base material known to be harder, faster, and more durable compared to an extruded base. You do wanna wax it regularly to maintain a nice consistent glide out there. And one other bonus with the high path is that you're gonna get a fine stone ground finish. So there's just a little bit of structure in the base of the snowboard that helps it glide even a little bit better in various snow conditions. And a couple other notable things about the high path is that it is noticeably lightweight. The base is made from 50% recycled materials. And overall, the materials and construction processes to make this snowboard are gonna reduce the fiberglass and resin content in the board by about 40%. So there's a bit of an eco-friendly story there, which is always nice to hear. And uh, that's gonna be it for a quick tech breakdown. Let's jump into how this board feels out on snow. All right, let's start off talking about the flex in this snowboard. I'd say it's a little more playful than what Solomon rates it at. For me, at around 155 pounds on the 156, I'd say it's a little bit on the softer side of medium. It's pretty consistent throughout the entire length of the snowboard and the nose and the tail, as well as torsionally. So it's pretty easy to control and maneuver with that uh, slightly softer torsional flex. That flex is gonna help you out for butters and flat ground type tricks as well if you're into that. The board's not gonna fight back too much. You are gonna have to battle that camber a little bit, but overall it's pretty manageable and pretty butter friendly in my opinion. Uh, the rocker in the nose and tail is gonna help to give you more leverage. And while that is also gonna make the board a little more catch free when you're flat base, when you are leaned into the nose or tail doing those flat ground type tricks, you do wanna pay attention to your edges, making sure that your downhill edge isn't weighted so you're not catching out there. Uh, but overall, this thing is a lot of fun for that type of stuff. And it's gonna come through with some pretty decent energy as well. I'd say pretty average pop in my opinion. Uh, gonna be fun for the exit or flat ground tricks. Gonna be fun in the park doing freestyle stuff or natural features as well. Really anytime you're trying to get this snowboard in the air it is gonna come through with a little bit of extra boost. Uh, not the poppiest board out there, but definitely has a pretty energetic feel to it. As far as the carving experience goes with the high path, it's gonna be pretty solid out there. And there's a couple specs I wanna highlight to help explain that feel just a little bit more. First is the waist width. So at a 156, you're gonna get a 255 millimeter waist. Pretty average, it's not too narrow, not too wide. Gonna have a good feel for just general cruising and carving around the entire resort, as well as a 7.3 meter side cut. So again, pretty average, maybe even a little bit tight for this style of snowboard. Gonna have a good feel at a wide variety of speeds and goes along with the overall theme of this snowboard, which I think 
is just a versatile feel for general free riding and all mountain exploring. And I wouldn't say this board's gonna be a high speed charger. It's a board that you can find the limits of if you really start to push it. You might start to see a little bit of chatter in the nose and tail with that slightly softer flex and the rocker in the tips. It's not gonna be the most powerful for pushing through chopped up variable snow at higher speeds either, but overall, I think for most of us, it's gonna be very capable, gonna have a good feel for exploring pretty much anywhere, whether you're on groomers, you're getting the trees, you're looking off piece for powder, uh, gonna have some nice energy when you're changing edges as well, kind of springing uh, from your heels to your toes. Unfortunately, we didn't have any fresh snow out of Mammoth for the test of this snowboard, but with the overall directional design, that taper, that setback, the directional shape, this is a board that's gonna offer some nice benefits in soft snow if you're looking for like uh, one board to do it all with a more free ride all mountain approach. I think it's definitely gonna be a good time in softer snow, uh, but not necessarily a powder specific snowboard. I was also able to spend a decent amount of time doing park laps on this snowboard. And for a directional board, I think it has a pretty solid feel doing that kind of stuff. Uh, a little bit of a novelty, but the flex is a pretty solid all around park flex. You can jib with it, you can hit jumps with it. I think the two things you wanna watch out for in the park is that slightly longer nose, making sure you're not clipping up as well as the setback and taper can give it a bit of a different feel uh, for switch landings and riding switch. So uh, something that might take a little bit of getting used to, like I mentioned before, but uh, not as much of a novelty as on some other directional boards. So um, I wouldn't go out of my way to ride this in the park, but if you happen to take some laps through there on this thing, I think I'll have a pretty good time. Overall, I think this board is going to be a good choice for riders that have a more free ride approach to their riding and are looking for something to explore the entire resort with that has a versatile and manageable feel to it. So if you're looking for something like that, consider the Solomon High Path. I'm going to have this snowboard linked down in the description below if you want to read more about it. And if you've had a chance to ride this snowboard, let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. You can leave any questions for me down there as well. Drop a like if you got some value. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I appreciate all of you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in a new board review next time. Take care everybody.